Stevenson enters the ranks of highest paid running backs. Ayuk stirring the pot. Camaro likes the Saints' new scheme while McLaughlin and McConkey generate buzz, as always. NFL news drives fantasy values, so stand by for this week's top five fantasy headlines. Headline number one, Stevenson gets paid like a featured back. Ramondre Stevenson said earlier this month that he believed the contract extension with New England was pretty close. He was correct. The Patriots and the running back reached an agreement Thursday on a four-year extension worth $36 million with $17 million guaranteed. The deal makes Stevenson the seventh highest paid running back in the NFL on a per-year basis, and it also puts him in line for a featured role under first-year offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt, who plans to lean heavily on the wide zone runs the Browns used during his tenure in Cleveland. Stevenson said he spent time studying the scheme this offseason, and as part of that, he watched films of Browns running back Nick Chubb. Of course, Stevenson won't be alone in the backfield. Free agent edition Antonio Gibson is there to compliment him. And to get a better feel for how the workload might be divided, football guy Ryan Weiss pointed to Van Pelt's recent history, reminding us how the duo of Chubb and Kareem Hunt held down Cleveland's backfield from 2020 to 2022. After Chubb went down last year, it was a two-back system again with Hunt and Jerome Ford. Weiss added the most likely uh, scenario is that Stevenson is the primary runner, seeding some passing game work to Gibson. If that means a Chubb-like role for Stevenson, it should pay dividends in fantasy. Stevenson could be had as running back 21 on underdog. This aligns with our football guys 2024 draft rankings where he sits at running back 20. The seventh round price isn't absorb exorbitant considering Stevenson was running back 19 over the first 11 games before he was hurt in week 13 last season. All that said, there are other appealing backs in this same range and most of them aren't offenses tied for the lowest scoring output in the NFL last year. Let this, though, be a reminder that mining lesser offenses is fine from a fantasy perspective as long as you stay close to the surface and lean into the narrow band of frontline players. And for now, Stevenson is that, and Thursday's payday only makes it clearer. Headline number two, increasing Ayuk-related angst could create value. Brandon Ayuk's TikTok, which appeared to show him telling new Commanders quarterback Jaden Daniels over FaceTime that the 49ers don't want him, caught everybody's attention and raised more questions about the star receiver's future in San Francisco. Under contract at $14.1 million in 2024, Ayuk is understandably seeking a new deal with the club. He reportedly wants $30 million or more per year. So as ProFootballTalk.com's Mike Florio suggested, when Ayuk said they don't want me back, he might have meant they don't want him back after this season. Or maybe he's saying the Niners don't want him back at all because they won't offer what he wants. While the club would be happy to have him play on the final year of his current deal, a new agreement is the most likely outcome here. NFL Network's Ian Rappaport reports the negotiations are still ongoing. The Athletics' Matt Barrows told me last weekend that the team has offered Ayuk slightly less than the $28 million a year Amon Ross St. Brown got from Detroit earlier this offseason. Barrows reminded me that the 49ers often take these deals to the bitter end. He pointed to Debo Sable's extension in 2022, which came on July 31st after a contentious offseason, and Nick Bosa's deal, which didn't get done until last September at the tail end of a summer-long holdout. While their negotiating style is nerve-wracking and lends itself to the kind of discussions we've seen around, about, and even by Ayuk, it also has been successful for the team. And the good news for fantasy managers is it could depress Ayuk's price, especially if the situation becomes more acrimonious. Ayuk was among the league's most efficient receivers last year, ranking top three at the position in yards per catch, yards per route run, yards per target, and explosive reception rate. He finished 2023 as fantasy's wide receiver 13, as wide receiver 15 in 2022. He's currently being drafted at his ceiling, going as wide receiver 12 with the 18th pick overall on underdog. I haven't been investing at that price, but we should all be watching to see if the cost starts dropping as concerns about the contract and a potential holdout gain more traction. If it does, don't be afraid to cash in when the time is right. I want to stress this. It might be the most important thing in this video. You can have risk on your roster without having a risky roster. When you take chances on players, do it at the right place and mitigate that risk with safer picks in other spots. And make sure the potential reward is worth it. And with Ayuk, it just might be. If this is the kind of content you're looking for, you'll love the Football Guys Daily Update. The biggest stories in football summarized, explained, and delivered straight to your inbox every day. Sign up and check it out. It's totally free and you can unsubscribe at any time. You'll find a link in the description below this video. And while you're there, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment. Your feedback matters. Headline number three is a rebound coming for Kamara. Running back Alvin Kamara is looking for a new contract, so he didn't attend the voluntary portions of the Saints offseason work. Instead, he got his first look at the new offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak's scheme during last weekend's mandatory minicamp practice. He liked what he saw. Run looks, pass looks, everything is intentional about this offense, Kamara said. 
Kubiak came to the Saints from the 49ers, so it's only natural to think he'll try to mimic some of what San Francisco does with Christian McCaffrey in New Orleans. Kamara might not be able to deliver CMC-like totals, but even being in the ballpark would serve the Saints and fantasy managers well this season. Kamara finished 2023 with a disappointing 1,100 scrimmage yards and six touchdowns after missing the first three weeks to suspension. While those might be solid totals for some, as recently as 2020, the veteran star was delivering seasons of around 1,600 yards and 15 touchdowns. Is he washed? We don't think so. For one thing, as New Orleans.football's Nick Underhill notes, the Saints didn't block well enough last season. In fact, they averaged one yard before contact per carry on the outside zone plays last year, with Kamara specifically averaging 1.1. The 49ers averaged 1.8 yards before contact on those plays, with McCaffrey hitting 2.1 yards. But the other thing, the price is right. Kamara is running back 13 on the Football Guys 2024 draft rankings. That's well ahead of his running back 20 average draft position on underdog. That round six to seven range is a target-rich environment, so feel free to mitigate if you consider Kamara a risky pick. Headline number four, the price is right on McLaughlin. There has been speculation that Jaleel McLaughlin could be poised to replace Javante Williams as Denver's lead back. Football guy and longtime well-connected Broncos insider Cecil Lammy said last week, the top Denver running back looks like McLaughlin. Lammy wondered if Williams will even make the team. Cecil isn't alone when it comes to optimistic takes on McLaughlin. Cody Rourke of Mile High Sports advised his readers that McLaughlin stood out daily during OTAs. Rourke added, it appears that head coach Sean Payton has fully entrusted the second year back to do more this season than he did last year. Remember, McLaughlin impressed as an undrafted rookie. As the team's number three running back, he dressed for all 17 games with three starts. He totaled 76 carries for 410 yards and a touchdown. He also had 31 receptions for 160 yards and two more scores. That's high-end production given the relatively low volume of touches. Meanwhile, SI.com's Chad Jensen believes Peyton's history of running backs catching passes out of the backfield dating back to his 16 years with the Saints is worth noting here. Stars emerged under Peyton in that span, including Reggie Bush, Pierre Thomas, Darius Sproles, and Kamara. After the team's mandatory minicamp earlier this month, Peyton said of McLaughlin, I know he wants to continue to work on his role in the passing game. We want that as well. So even if he doesn't supplant Williams or even move ahead of last year's number two, Samaj P. Ryan, a receiving role might be sufficient here. Rookie quarterback Bo Nix, the likely starter, completed at least 71% of his passes at Oregon last season. Some might complain that a third of those attempts were thrown to receivers at or behind the line of scrimmage. None of those complaining will be fantasy managers invested in McLaughlin. And what if all the positive buzz here just turns out to be pie in the sky? Well, first of all, I don't think it will be. But also, despite the increasing buzz, McLaughlin is currently running back 50 on underdog. The list of players going ahead of him includes Kendry Miller, Rico Dowdle, Packers rookie Marshawn Lloyd, Ty Chandler, Dolphins rookie Jalen Wright, Tyler Algier, and Bills rookie Ray Davis. There's plenty of upside on that list, but not all of them are the apparent apple of their coach's eye and have the anticipated role that will allow them to maximize it. Headline number five, McConkie making all the right moves. The Chargers parted ways with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams in March because of salary cap issues, leaving Joshua Palmer and Quentin Johnston atop their depth chart. Then they selected Lad McConkie in the second round of April's draft. According to Los Angeles Times beat writer Jeff Miller, McConkie displayed the most potential throughout the offseason program. With his precise route running and sudden quickness in tight spaces, the sort of qualities that would appeal to any quarterback. Those qualities definitely appeal to a quarterback named Justin Herbert. He understands the game, Herbert said of McConkie. I'm really looking forward to getting him the ball. Meanwhile, as our own Matt Waldman reminded readers in this week's edition of The Gut Check, you'll find a link below, Herbert's primary target during his career has been Allen, who functioned mainly out of the slot. Waldman believes McConkie is Allen's direct replacement. He's going in round six as wide receiver 40 in current underdog drafts. If you think he can't return that value in a run-heavy Greg Roman offense, think again. Waldman contends the idea of McConkie earning 130 to 150 targets, 90 to 110 catches, 1,000 to 1,200 yards of three to five scores isn't out of the question with the rookie assuming Allen's role. While Roma's past receivers never reached that 150 target mark, they've come close. Michael Crabtree drew 127 targets under Roman in San Francisco. Anquan Bolden's high as a Niner was 130. Sammy Watkins was 128 in Buffalo, and Hollywood Brown hit 146 targets as a Raven. If others in your draft are worried about that run-heavy attack, let them worry while you reap the McConkie rewards. That's it for me, Bob Harris. I'll be back here next Friday with more of the fantasy news that matters most to you. And also, watch my fantasy notebook every Monday morning. Thank you.